This is section 04 of The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Complete Works of George Saville, First Marquis of Halifax. Section 4. Advice to a Daughter, Behavior and Conversation. It is time now to lead you out of your house into the world, a dangerous step, where your virtue alone will not secure you, except it is attended with a great deal of prudence. You must have both for your guard, and not stir without them. The enemy is abroad, and you are sure to be taken if you are found straggling. Your behavior is therefore to incline strongly towards the reserved part. Your character is to be immovably fixed upon that bottom, not excluding a mixture of greater freedom, as far as it may be innocent and well-timed. The extravagancies of the age have made caution more necessary, and by the same reason that the too great license of ill men hath by consequence in many things restrained the lawful liberty of those who did not abuse it the unjustifiable freedoms of some of your sex have involved the rest in the penalty of being reduced and though this cannot so alter the nature of things as to make that criminal which in itself is indifferent yet if it maketh it dangerous that alone is sufficient to justify the restraint a close behavior is the fittest to receive virtue for its constant guest because there and there only it can be secure proper reserves are the outworks and must never be deserted by those who intend to keep the place they keep off the possibilities not only of being taken but of being attempted and if a woman seeth danger though at never so remote a distance she is for that time to shorten her line of liberty she who will allow herself to go to the utmost extent of every thing that is lawful is so very near going farther that those who lie at watch will begin to count upon her mankind from the double temptation of vanity and desire is apt to turn everything a woman doth to the hopeful side and there are few who dare make an impudent application till they discern something which they are willing to take for an encouragement it is safer therefore to prevent such forwardness than to go about to cure it it gathereth strength by the first allowances and claimeth a right from having been at any time suffered with impunity therefore nothing is with more care to be avoided than such a kind of civility as may be mistaken for invitation and it will not be enough for you to keep yourself free from any criminal engagements for if you do that which either raiseth hopes or createth discourse there is a spot thrown upon your good name and those kind of stains are the harder to be taken out being dropped upon you by the man's vanity as well as by the woman's malice most men are in one sense platonic lovers though they are not willing to own that character they are so far philosophers as to allow that the greatest part of pleasure lieth in the mind and in pursuance of that maxim there are few who do not place the felicity more in the opinion of the world of their being prosperous lovers than in the blessing itself how much soever they appear to value it this being so you must be very cautious not to gratify these chameleons at the price of bringing a cloud upon your reputation which may be deeply wounded though your conscience is unconcerned your own sex too will not fail to help the least appearance that giveth a handle to be ill turned the best of them will not be displeased to improve their own value by laying others under a disadvantage when there is a fair occasion given for it 
it distinguisheth them still the more their own credit is more exalted and like a picture set off with shades shineth more when a lady either less innocent or less discreet is set near to make them appear so much the brighter if these lend their breath to blast such as are so unwary as to give them this advantage you may be sure there will be a stronger gale from those who besides malice or emulation have an interest too to strike hard upon a virtuous woman it seemeth to them that their load of infamy is lessened by throwing part of it upon others so that they will not only improve it when it lieth in their way but take pains to find out the least mistake an innocent woman committeth in revenge of the injury she doth in leading a life which is a reproach to them with these you must be extreme wary and neither provoke them to be angry nor invite them to be intimate to the men you are to have a behavior which may secure you without offending them no ill-bred affected shyness nor a roughness unsuitable to your sex and unnecessary to your virtue but a way of living that may prevent all coarse railleries or unmannerly freedoms looks that forbid without rudeness and oblige without invitation or leaving room for the saucy inferences men's vanity suggesteth to them upon the least encouragements this is so very nice that it must engage you to have a perpetual watch upon your eyes and to remember that one careless glance giveth more advantage than a hundred words not enough considered the language of the eyes being very much the most significant and the most observed your civility which is always to be preserved must not be carried to a compliance which may betray you into irrecoverable mistakes this french ambiguous word complaisance hath led your sex into more blame than all other things put together it carrieth them by degrees into a certain thing called a good kind of woman an easy idle creature that doth neither good nor ill but by chance hath no choice but leaveth that to the company she keepeth time which by degrees addeth to the signification of words hath made her according to the modern style little better than one who thinketh it a rudeness to deny when civilly required either her service in person or her friendly assistance to those who would have a meeting or want a confidant she is a certain thing always at hand an easy companion who hath ever great compassion for distressed lovers she censureth nothing but rigor and is never without a plaister for a wounded reputation in which chiefly lieth her skill in chirurgery she seldom hath the propriety of any particular gallant but liveth upon brokage and waiteth for the scraps her friends are content to leave her there is another character not quite so criminal yet not less ridiculous which is that of a good-humoured woman one who thinketh she must always be in a laugh or a broad smile because good humour is an obliging quality thinketh it less ill manners to talk impertinently than to be silent in company when such a prating engine rideth admiral and carrieth the lantern in a circle of fools a cheerful coxcomb coming in for a recruit the chattering of monkeys is a better noise than such a concert of senseless merriment if she is applauded in it she is so encouraged that like a ballad singer who if commended breaketh his lungs she letteth herself loose and overfloweth upon the company she conceiveth that mirth is to have no intermission and therefore she will carry it about with her though it be to a funeral and if a man should put a familiar question she doth not know very well how to be angry for then she would be no more that pretty thing called a good-humoured woman 
this necessity of appearing at all times to be so infinitely pleased is a grievous mistake since in a handsome woman that invitation is unnecessary and in one who is not so ridiculous it is not intended by this that you should forswear laughing but remember that fools being always painted in that posture it may fright those who are wise from doing it too frequently and going too near a copy which is so little inviting and much more from doing it loud which is an unnatural sound and looketh so much like another sex that few things are more offensive that boisterous kind of jollity is as contrary to wit and good manners as it is to modesty and virtue besides it is a coarse kind of quality that throweth a woman into a lower form and degradeth her from the rank of those who are more refined some ladies speak loud and make a noise to be the more minded which looketh as if they beat their drums for volunteers and if by misfortune none come into them they may not without reason be a good deal out of countenance there is one thing yet more to be avoided which is the example of those who intend nothing farther than the vanity of conquest and think themselves secure of not having their honor tainted by it some are apt to believe their virtue is too obscure and not enough known except it is exposed to a broader light and set out to its best advantage by some public trials these are dangerous experiments and generally fail being built upon so weak a foundation as that of a too great confidence in ourselves it is as safe to play with fire as to dally with gallantry love is a passion that hath friends in the garrison and for that reason must by a woman be kept at such a distance that she may not be within the danger of doing the most usual thing in the world which is conspiring against herself else the humble gallant who is only admitted as a trophy very often becometh the conqueror he putteth on the style of victory and from an admirer groweth into a master for so he may be called from the moment he is in possession the first resolutions of stopping at good opinions and esteem grow weaker by degrees against the charms of courtship skilfully applied a lady is apt to think a man speaketh so much reason whilst he is commending her that she hath much ado to believe him in the wrong when he is making love to her and when besides the natural inducements your sex hath to be merciful she is bribed by well-chosen flattery the poor creature is in danger of being caught like a bird listening to the whistle of one that hath a snare for it conquest is so tempting a thing that it often maketh women mistake men's submissions which with all their fair appearance have generally less respect than art in them you are to remember that men who say extreme fine things many times say them most for their own sakes and that the vain gallant is often as well pleased with his own compliments as he could be with the kindest answer where there is not that ostentation you are to suspect there is design and as strong perfumes are seldom used but where they are necessary to smother an unwelcome scent so excessive good words leave room to believe they are strewed to cover something which is to gain admittance under a disguise you must therefore be upon your guard and consider that of the two respect is more dangerous than anger it puts even the best understandings out of their place for the time till their second thoughts restore them it stealeth upon us insensibly throweth down our defences and maketh it too late to resist after we have given it that advantage whereas railing goeth away in sound it hath so much noise in it that by giving warning it bespeaketh caution 
respect is a slow and sure poison and like poison swelleth us within ourselves where it prevaileth too much it groweth to be a kind of apoplexy in the mind turneth it quite round and after it hath once seized the understanding becometh mortal to it for these reasons the safest way is to treat it like a sly enemy and to be perpetually upon the watch against it i will add one advice to conclude this head which is that you will let every seven years make some alteration in you towards the graver side and not be like the girls of fifty who resolve to be always young whatever time with his iron teeth hath determined to the contrary unnatural things carry a deformity in them never to be disguised the liveliness of youth in a riper age looketh like a new patch upon an old gown so that a gay matron a cheerful old fool may be reasonably put into the list of the tamer kind of monsters there is a certain creature called a grave hobby horse a kind of she numps that pretendeth to be pulled to a play and must needs go to bartholomew fair to look after the young folks whom she only seemeth to make her care in reality she taketh them for her excuse such an old butterfly is of all creatures the most ridiculous and the soonest found out it is good to be early in your caution to avoid any thing that cometh within distance of such despicable patterns and not like some ladies who defer their conversion till they have been so long in possession of being laughed at that the world doth not know how to change their style even when they are reclaimed from that which gave the first occasion for it the advantages of being reserved are too many to set down i will only say that it is a guard to a good woman and a disguise to an ill one it is of so much use to both that those ought to use it as an artifice who refuse to practice it as a virtue end of section four advice to a daughter behavior and conversation read by john greenman